this series that we are gathered in today is the beginning of a four-part series called Intentional Christianity. Intentional Christianity. And intentionality is defined as the fact of being deliberate or purposeful. And so coming up with this idea of being deliberate in purpose, especially in the months of August, I begin to realize that a lot of us are making our final steps in our summer plans. And many of us are being deliberate and purposeful in making and planning things that will allow us to take advantage of these final weeks in this, of the month to get away and to find ways to bask in the sun. And so in the same way in this August sort of uh, time in which we are deliberately planning, I thought it would be good if these sermons uh, looked at some teachings of Christ that uh, he taught to his disciples, that he teaches to us today, that encourage us to be deliberate and purposeful in our spiritual journey, in our faith journey. And so as we are making plans to do all that happens in the month of August, these next four weeks we'll look at teachings of Jesus that encourage us to be deliberate and purposeful in our faith walk. And all that is well and good. You'll hear these sermons or you'll, and you'll read these scriptures, but also kind of entail, entangled in that is this idea of loving Jesus. So what are the, the steps? What are the things? What are the lessons that we need to do to show our love for Jesus, to show our commitment to the movement? And I have no doubt in my mind as I'm standing here looking out at you, my brothers and sisters, that we all love Jesus, that we all in various ways are committing and want to continue to commit to uh, Christ as our Lord and Savior. But I also recognize that many of you may also be like me and find it difficult to live as passionately for Jesus as we did when we first made our commitment of faith. And so today's uh, idea and today's sermon as an, an intentional step in our Christian journey is to commit to the Christian diet, to commit to Jesus's diet. I said to someone coming in that if you're going to commit to coming to church any Sunday of the month, it's, the, uh, it's always a great time to commit to the Sundays in which we are receiving the Lord's Supper, the Eucharist, the, the body of Christ, the blood of Christ. But that still doesn't negate that sometimes as we go to and fro, as life gets in the way, as we... Uh, go to work, come home from work, as we pick up the kids, drop off the kids, as we run this errand and come back from this errand, as, as this thing happens with the house, as, you know, it, it, we're always, it's always something. All these things sometimes might happen, and at some point in time, we might find it difficult to live as passionately as we did when we first made our commitment to the faith. And like I said, I've gone through a similar cycle in my faith journey. I remember uh, as a confirmant or just uh, going through confirmation uh, at, at, a, at about 14, 15, 16 years of age. And uh, after confirmation, I was asked to uh, be a, uh, the United Methodist Youth Fellowship leader. Uh, I was asked to join not only uh, the adult usher group, but also lead in the development of a youth usher group. I was even, uh, Brother Vinny, a, an honorary member of the trustees. They gave me my own little set of keys <laughs> that I uh, was charged with to open the doors and to turn the lights off and to, uh, to do all these things that a trustee did at that time. I even had the passion to remember my own baptism. 
Many of us were baptized as a child and not being able to remember that my father uh, led a journey of people who were being baptized for the first time and being uh, 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 leading in an act of immersion for those who wanted to remember their baptism. And all of these things led that passion, that fire. I wanted to serve the church. I wanted to, to do as much as I could. I was excited about my faith. But then time passed. I surrendered to other competing allegiances. Got into a couple of disagreements with people who didn't see things my way. And I ultimately lost that loving feeling. And as a result of losing that loving feeling, my commitment to this Jesus movement diminished and what increased was a steady diet of worldly concerns. And this is an important piece because it moves us from our last month sermon series, Anointed to Break Down Walls, which focus on not only remembering that we have the power to break down those feelings, those beliefs, those personal agendas that not only keep, that keep us divided, but also we have the power to make choices to break down personal walls within us that may prevent us from taking small steps forward in our discipleship and Christian education journey. And so we went through last month's uh, Anointed to Break Down Wall series and we came to the end of that series with a focus on uh, Luke chapter 11, verse 1. Uh, many of you know it as the Lord's Prayer. And I said that the Lord's Prayer served as a great conclusion to the series and also they offered a great segue to this series because many times in our life, we need to remember that we were not only made in the image of God, but deeper reflection will lead us to celebrate, remember and celebrate that we are children of a loving God who responds to us. And whether you call God Father or, or Abba, Daddy, or any other inclusive language uh, these days, the act still is true. That we are children of God and no one should ever be able to take away that joy that that brings us. Because it's this intimate relationship with a loving God that leads us to joyfully embody the fact that God has a purpose for all of our lives. And I want to repeat that again, that God has a purpose for all of our lives. Because it's this purpose that is bound and interconnected with the life, the ministry, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so our fleeting moments of feeling powerlessness or even passionlessness to break down walls within our personal and collective lives are in part remedied as a result of this continuous and intentional binding in Christ Jesus. This intentional and continuous uh, feeling of being connected to the one who loves you, the one who calls you child. And today's scripture, scripture that John read, this, this interconnectedness is the main teaching point of Jesus today. And he says in verse 56 that those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. And this word, this Greek word that is translated abide has this uh, ongoing uh, attitude about it, this ongoing meaning that those who continue to eat my flesh and drink my blood will have that interconnectedness, that being bounded to me. And once we get past this bizarre idea that Jesus is saying in very uh, uh, modern day language, eat me, we can understand the deeper meaning that prompts us to renew our commitment to the life, to life in Christ. That is when we switch to a different diet, a different diet of worldly concerns, a different a diet from pleasures and desires of the world, to a diet that is uh, chock full of interconnectedness with the fullness of the Messiah, then as Jesus attempts to articulate, you'll look at God's purposeful and intentional call on your life in fresh new ways. 
But unfortunately, my sisters and brothers in Christ, the crowd that we see in today's scripture seems to have difficulties choosing and committing to Jesus's diet. You heard Jonathan read the scripture as they were going back and forth and Jesus was trying to explain this uh, abiding or this being uh, this uh, this sense of being uh, bound and interconnected. You heard the scriptures, uh, Jonathan read in the scriptures that went back and forth about the difficulty they had in choosing and committing and, and letting go of some of the things that they understood as a, a divine miracle from God. And so I think we should think about that for a little bit because many of us at times are like the crowd. When we decide to diet, we're deciding, what we're deciding to do is commit to a lifestyle change. I remember several years ago, on a doctor's appointment that I had a, a, a well visit, just the annual checkup, the doctor said to me, William, you're on the verge or on the verge of having high cholesterol and hypertension. I mean, at this time, brothers and sisters, I'm a 35 year old uh, young man. Uh, and uh, this doctor said plainly to me, you have to change your diet and commit to a lifestyle change. And, and Again, I'm 35 years old, high cholesterol, hypertension, get out of here. I didn't believe it. I didn't want to hear it. I didn't accept it. But the doctor wasn't as, and the doctor though wasn't as explicit as Jesus was basically saying the same sentiment Jesus was saying today. Those who choose to commit to a new diet shall live and not only shall they live, but they shall live with purpose and they shall live with passion and they shall live even amidst life's ups and downs. And the doctor said, William, you have to commit to a new diet. And like the physical diet, it still took me a while and often still does to accept that in my spiritual diet, my relationship with Christ was less about what God can do for me, less about how God could advance my personal agenda, less about how God can uh, satisfy the personal happiness and desires of my heart, but instead is about humbly accepting the challenge to utilize gifts and privilege and even a necessary mustard seed sized faith to live a life full of repentance, forgiveness, and the other fruits of the Spirit. First United Methodist Church of Westfield, hear what Jesus said then and is saying now, that there is a fresh definition of faithfulness and his call to discipleship then and maybe even now unsettles his listeners' presumptions and preconceptions uh, that what happens could either be, and so then what happens uh, could either be an intentional fleeing from his word and presence and as a result, intentionally steering clear from God's path of salvation and their and God's given purpose for your life? Or what could happen as we listen to these this new definition of faithfulness and this fresh definition of discipleship is that it encourages us to make intentional uh, and make intentional steps of believing that our feasting on the flesh and blood of Jesus inspires us to constantly recommit ourselves to the mission of God and as a result, embody the hopeful message of daily eternal living. Soon I will invite you to the altar to eat Jesus. I mean, yes, it sounds strange, but hear what the words were saying again. Eat of my flesh and my blood. And yes, so physically what this means today is you're going to physically ingest bread and juice by intention, but you're also going to make an intentional commitment to this Christian diet, a diet that brings you life. A diet that is chock full of fruits of the spirit, of love, of joy, of peace. A diet that is full of patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness. A diet that is full of gentleness and even self-control. A diet that prioritizes welcoming of the stranger. A diet that asks us to consider sacrifice as a spiritual discipline. 
A diet that around the world symbolizes Christian unity and a truth that within this meal, you are never alone. A diet that comes as the power of new life that invigorates and revitalizes you, me, us, as members of the body of Christ. Sometimes the only intentional step we can make amidst our hurts and brokenness, our searching and our certainty, is towards the altar. As we enter the final days of summer, this is a good time for us to bask in the glory of the sun. But my, intention, my invitation to you is to come to the altar and bask in the glory of the sun, through which our passion for our living comes. I'm reminded of the preachers who would invite worshipers to the altar. Even during my days of wondering what am I to do with my life? Where has my purpose gone? And these preachers would use language such as come to the altar and lay your burdens down. They would say come to the altar and be in the presence of the Lord. They would say come to the altar and surrender it all and let the Lord of victory fight your battles. Casting Crowns has a song entitled, Just Be Held. And it opens up by saying, so when you're on your knees and answers seem so far away, you are not alone. Stop holding on and just be held. Held by the one who abides in you because you commit to this diet, the Jesus diet. My prayer is that as you kneel at this altar, that your mere presence of here, being here, your act of listening to the one from above, or even you speaking with your heart to God will lead you to understand your next steps in your faith journey. Amen.